Search our mind, search our thoughts. If there is anything that disqualifies us from your presence, forgive us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we believe and we trust in you, O God. We believe and we trust in you. We know that ancient of days, your blood will wash us and cleanse us. Your blood will sanctify us and make us holy. Therefore, we present our hearts to you this afternoon and we say, Lord, wash us and cleanse us. 
Purify us by your blood in the name of Jesus. Sanctify us and make us holy in the name of Jesus. Purify my heart. Let me be a school of your sure silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as good, pure gold, refined as fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy, set apart for you, my master. I'm ready to do your will. Here, say, Lord, I'm ready for your will. I'm ready to accept your power. I'm ready to accept and embrace what you have for me. Shall we embrace it? Father, here we are, O oh God. Many are your promises, Father, that they are lying idle for me. Many are your counsel that they are lying idle for me, O oh God. How I delight in your wisdom. How I delight in your counsel. How I delight in your presence, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we bring our hearts to you, O oh God. We bring our souls and our mind. We pray the Lord, let your will be done in the name of Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. We worship you. Mama, mama, we give you glory, Lord. As we honor you, we give you glory, Lord. As we honor you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. Yes, you are. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Revelation and knowledge. We pray for understanding and wisdom so that we yes. may not walk in darkness with God. Many go astray, many live their own life and they turn from the truths. Father, who is a child that you love? The one that you discipline and show him your counsel. 
And therefore we present ourselves to you as sons of God. Reveal yourself to us, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The requirements, God's requirement to the sons. God's requirement to his sons. The Bible says in the book of John, the chapter number one. Let's go there. Jesus Christ, as the word of God, became the son of God. And when he became the son of God, you're welcome, Sister Charlotte. God bless you, my dear. Love you with my heart. You are welcome, Brother Samuel. Brother Samuel Joe, God bless you. Above all, you are also welcome, Sister Gifty, Sister Grace, Sister Linda, Sister Womi. Love you, girls. God bless you for showing up with a heart that is searching for the truth. I know that you love truth. That is why you are here. Therefore, I will do my possible best to give you all the counsel of God. I will give you all the counsel of God that I know. And the one that I don't know, the Lord himself, will guide you into it. Turn your Bible with me into the book of St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. The chapter number one. The chapter number one. Let's read. Verse number 12. Verse number 12. John chapter number 1 verse 12. But as many as received in him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. To them give he power to become the sons of God. But as many that believe in him, to them that believe in his name, those who receive Jesus as the son of God, those who embrace Jesus as God's son, they are changed to become the sons of God as well. The moment a person believes in the sonship of Jesus Christ, that person automatically changes, becomes the son of God. And as many that believe in him, <laughs> to them, to believe in his name, he gave them the Holy Spirit that made sonship. When an information or the prophecy concerning the birth of Jesus Christ was about to be fulfilled. An angel of the Lord came unto Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, who was still a virgin, and said that you are going to give birth to the Son of God. And through him many are going to be turned into sons of God. He has power. He has power to change us to himself. Sin also has power to change us to himself. Anyone that commits sin become a sinner. Anyone that allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in him and live for the Holy Spirit a call a son or the righteous. The Bible have different names. The Bible have different names concerning Christians. They call us the royal priesthood. The holy family. People that belong to God. Sometimes he calls us the friend of God. Sometimes he calls us the army of Christ, the church, the ecclesia, the people that have been set apart for the master's use. Sometimes he calls us the light of the world. Sometimes he compares us to the salt of this world. But above all, he sometimes calls us the friend of God. Sometimes he called the bride of Christ. In the any description or title that Christ has put in on us, it reflects on his love and his relationship towards us. God dealings with man is built on his relationship with man. 
So everything that he called us, he referred us to himself. He referred us to himself. Understand this. Understand this. It will change you. When Jesus defending the son, talking about two sons, two sons, when you go to the book of Luke, the chapter number 15, talking about a prodigal son, Jesus used sons to reflect on the father's relationship with the church and with Israel. God's relationship with the church and Israel is father and son relationship. And therefore, today we want to see as sons, either you are male or female, you are son of God. As many that believe in him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Not born according to the blood, but born according to the Father's will. We have become the sons of God according to the Father's will. According to Jesus Christ, who is the Father's will. Jesus is the Father's will. So we become sons of God through the Father's will. Yeah. The statements which were not born of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but the will of God. Our sonship. Our sonship. Maybe some of us we don't understand the title sonship. Sonship means you came out of me. You are my seed. And sons are equal to their fathers. There is equality between the son and the father. There is equality. As the father is, so is the son. The children of Israel knew this. The children of Israel knew this. And that is why in many cases, they spoke against Jesus Christ because he identified himself as the son of God. Understand this. Understand this. They persecuted him. They persecuted him because he identified himself equal with the father. Equal with the father. What does it mean? It means that what the father does, we can also do. Whatsoever the father does, you and me, we can do. Everything. Everything. The Bible says that God created heaven and earth with his son. In him was life. In Christ. As a son of God. Then we've been reading Proverbs chapter number 8. So as at now you know. And you understand that Jesus is the son. And today we are going to go there by the way. That's what we're going to use. Proverbs 7 and 8. This evening or to the entire day. That's what we're going to use. To abstract certain commandments and requirement as sons of God. Why? Because as a son is, he must behave the same as a father. When the prodigal son came home, look at the thing that the father gave him. He gave him a crown. He gave him a signal ring. Ring of belonging. A crown that he of his inheritance. He gave him sandals. Sandals is the beauty, the glory, the honor. Sandals is the strength, the power, where his feet would tread upon. He carried everything that the father has. And above them, he threw a party. He threw a party. The father threw a party to the son when he came back home. The same way applies to every sinner that comes back to God. Every chosen and a royal priesthood who is walking as a slave in this world. Out of ignorance, ignorance and incomplacency, he thinks that he can do it without God. Out of ignorance and complacency, man thinks that I'm okay without God. You hear me saying that English language that sometimes astounds me is I'm okay, I'm alright. I'm alright. You're alright. It's something like even greetings. When a British meets you, you're right. Meaning that, are you fine? You're right. It's a form of greeting. They don't say good morning or no. You're right. 
You're right. <laughs> and if you want to give him something, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Or even if you want to offer him something, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so it's some kind of a language that makes a person to be complacent. Then I am full of myself. So let's consider uh, what the Bible says about the sons of God. What the Bible says about those sons of God and what are the requirements. Turn with me to John the chapter number 5 Verse number 20 John chapter 5 Verse number 20 It says Can I read that? Yes sister right. I read in Jesus name For the father loved the son And showed him all things That himself doeth And he will show him Greater works than these That ye may marvel Amen The father shows the relationship of the father and son causes the father to show him everything. Father doesn't hide anything from his son. A good father, like the father in heaven, he showed everything and he said greater things would he reveal to his son. Talking about Jesus Christ. Meaning that there were many things that Jesus didn't know when he was on earth here. Heaven was sealed. Heaven was sealed. To the extent that when the disciple came to him and asked him, when will his second coming be? He said the time and the hour nobody knows except the father. So, so long as he came here as a son, he didn't know so many things. The father is desiring to show you and me things. Just start, go to this uh, John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's see I'm in Jesus name. the qualification that the Father has put on the sons. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. The relationship with the son is life. The Father gave his son's life. The Father gives his son's life. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus Christ who is life the source of all life and therefore everyone that receives Jesus is alive there is no sickness there is no disease there is no illness I challenge you if you are going through anything cry to the Lord and say Lord your sons don't sick they don't fall to sickness I'm provoking somebody today your sons they lack nothing your sons knows things about you there is nothing hidden from God's sons for the father loved the son, therefore he shows him many things, and great things will he show him. Sister, go to St. Luke Gospel. So the father shows, the father makes us. St. Luke Gospel, the chapter number 1, verse number 35. The quality, the quality relationship that the father has with the son. And because of that quality relationship, this is the father's response towards the son. Go ahead, sister. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Yes, 45. 35, please. All right. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall over overshadow thee. Therefore also that, that holy thing, which, which, sorry, I take it from the beginning. And the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god our sonship our sonship our son our sonship is received through the overshadow of the holy spirit you cannot call yourself the son of god if you are not overshadowed by the holy spirit if you are not consummated, if you are not totally of the Holy Spirit, you are not being controlled, you are not being nurtured, you are not being influenced by the Holy Spirit, then you are not the sons of God. He said that when we believe in Him, He grants us, and that ability grants us to make us, making us become the sons of God, is an overshadow, as I said earlier on, and that is what I want to give this scripture, overshadow of the Holy Spirit. 
So without the Holy Spirit, nobody classifies as a son of God. And how can I know that I have the Holy Spirit? I need to have the fruits of the Spirit to testify. Because a tree is known or identified by the fruits that they bear. I was talking to this young sister and she said that some people have removed all these jewelries. Some people have removed all these things. Yet their heart is so dirty. You see how Satan puts people in bondage? Instead of focusing themselves, they focus on other people. What people have done. Which they have not done. Do what people have done before you complain about them. Before you can find faults, me and you, we can judge others based upon the word of God. We can print the word, present the word of God to people. And that may sound judgment to them. Why? Because we know that we are not doing them. Anytime we stop sin, we become judges on that area. Judges are not people who have learned, but people who are living. He that demand equity from people, he himself must be a justifiable person to be justified above every other thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is how it works. The Father calls us sons because of the relationship that he's built with us. The sonship relationship Pastor Ajay, I believe you are very well versed in this area, so I'm going to leave you to continue from there. <laughs> the relationship of the father and the son relationship. That's what we are talking about. God demands from his sons. And we are trying to link our relationship with the father in such a I'm taking you a little bit, so I want you to glance through your notes and pick whatever it is and pick it from where I will end. The point here is this. When we believe in Jesus, he qualifies us by giving us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, Luke chapter 1, the Most High, the Spirit of the Most High shall come upon the woman Mary and shall bring a baby into the womb. And that which will be given birth shall be called the Son of God. Meaning that we can become the sons of God by believing in Jesus Christ. He granted us the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, then our sonship will be emerged. The Holy Spirit impregnates us with the character and the nature of God that qualify us to become the sons of God. Believe in Him, practice in Him. So a Christian is not a mere a person that confesses Jesus, but a Christian is a person that imitates Jesus Christ. Copy. <coughs> And that imitation comes by identification. You identify yourself. You identify yourself. And therefore you grow. The Holy Spirit will grow Christ in you. You bring the seeds and the nature of Christ in you. Let's go to Psalm number 2. Psalm number 2. I want to establish some few facts. And I'll leave it to Pastor Jay to continue. To me, you have heard my voice over and over again. So Psalm <laughs> Psalm number 2 says what? Psalm chapter 2 verse what? Verse 7 please. I will declare the decree. Mm -hmm. The Lord has said of me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten in thee. Thou art my son. This was the prophecy. I mean yesterday Pastor Jay was leading us to the prophetic utterances that came through the scribes and the psalmists. Yeah, Solomon was one of them. Solomon was so intelligent. He's one of the most intelligent person that God produced in the Bible. Yeah, I think a day, a day before yesterday, I was listening to a man that was saying, and last night I was listening to another person that was saying that these people were the highest cosmic, give all kinds of demonic terms. And they would try to and say that King David was so powerful, King Solomon was so powerful that they were operating in the very high scheme of, of, some, of some kind of occultic powers. And because of that, they've taken all their books out of the Bible and, and, and the, the cosmic people are using them. The, 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 the intelligent people, the Americans, those uh, Freemasons and all these people. I said, this is lies. 
this is lies. That says and seven book of Moses were the book that compared they are magicians' book, they are magic book, all court's book. Satan knew words that attracted God, and he abstracted most of them from the Bible, and he called them the book of power. So be aware of this. Today, pastors are using the Bible to do to say so many things. Listen to me, any pastor that asks you to use a candle is awkward. Any pastor that uses uh, incense is awkward. Any power that use numbers and all these things, number five, number seven, number eight, they are awkward. They are in scripture. They are in scripture, but when Jesus came, Jesus covered them all. In the Old Testament, those things were counted. But they all point to Christ Jesus. They all point to Christ Jesus. So let us be very cautious. I was listening to a gentleman that was saying that uh, if you are trading and because for the devil not to come and steal your money, put shackle and garlic. All these things are occultic things. You let it be very careful because it limits the blood of Jesus. Apart from eating them or using them as products, but they cannot protect us in safety horses. When it comes to deliverance, only the blood of Jesus can deliver man. If garlic and charcoal have power to drive demons away from us, the blood of Jesus will be in vain. I say them by their word because of the knowledge of where they are coming from. When a person who was former awkward grandmaster is telling you something, I'm telling you, his knowledge might be still on those things that he has been taught. They know little. So please listen to their testimony, but go to Jesus Christ. We bring these men into your life, not for them to preach Christ to you, or the ways of God to you, but for them to expose the devil. That is the reason why we bring these people to you. Former occult, former grandmasters, former, they don't know the depths of what we know. Because only the sons of God, that the Father reveals his will. Listen to me. If somebody yesterday was a court grandmaster, he never knew the will of God. Why? Because John chapter number, first John chapter 5, verse 20 says that. And we know that the Son of God has come. And has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son Jesus Christ, he is true. We may know truth where from where? From Jesus Christ only. The truth about God, truth about this life, truth about Satan can only be ascertained. The occultic people, they go to occultic world and they utter so many rubbish. Sometimes when I'm listening to them, I laugh. I say, my God, these people have been truly deceived. So to them, when you go to them, they don't emphasize and put all points you to Christ. Any person who does not point you to Christ is an awkward. I'm telling you, I'm not afraid. Oh, the brother has repented. Yes, he has. But he doesn't point you to the power of Jesus Christ. I was listening to one of us, my our sister that I worked with last night. Her husband apparently is one of the false prophets. So when she started telling me, this is us, immediately she said, hey, sister, leave this man. You are dead. Dead man walking around. Leave him alone. Let him do what he's doing. So she showed me some video that a man has done. I said, your man is awkward. Was he praying with you when he was here with you? She said, no. She never prayed with me. She only prays when I'm outside. Called himself a pastor. He doesn't pray with his wife. He prays only the, 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 the wife is outside. I say, your wife, husband is awkward. She led me to Facebook, YouTube to watch some of his videos. I said, sister, don't waste your time on this person. Showing people how to get rich. Showing people how to overcome debts and all this nonsense. And the sister said, he knew all this thing, but when he came here, he left me debt. 
when he came into my life, he left me debts. A naked person promises you of abundance of goods. And people are listening to this man. Hey, 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 hey. Like lots of number. Nothing functioned without the blood of Jesus. In the Old Testament, nothing was accepted. And nothing was conquered. In the New Testament, the same vein. Nothing. Satan is afraid of nothing. You go and build charcoal around you. Build your house with charcoal. And, 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 and what do we call them? And, uh, uh, and garlic. Surround yourself around. Put how many garlic in front of your bed. And if you don't have the blood of Jesus, I'm telling you, Satan will just kick them and hit you and go his ways. Let them point us to Christ because he knows the mind of God. He knows the mind of God. The man of God is preparing because whenever he comes here, everything changes. So he's putting things together. I'm going to release him soon. So let's talk about the relationship with the sons and daughters. Psalm number 2 verse 7 says, Today I have I have made you my son. I have made you my son. So Jesus wasn't the son of God, but he became the son of God when he came here on earth. The day that God established him, that he is going to be equal with him in all things. We can't, I can't see when does the equality between the father and the son started. I know they have started because from the beginning of creation, God said, let us make man in our image. But when was it established on earth? It was established on earth the day that humanity was formed, right from the creation of forming of man and woman, sons and daughters for God. That day, the sonship was established. And the day that Jesus sacrificed his blood in Genesis, where man sent the same chapter, the day that the sonship were established. So this psalmist, Psalm number 2, verse 7, was a prophecy which was being revealed, taken back. When we go to, also, when we go to uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 8 also talk about the sonship of Jesus Christ as a co-worker with God. So what are we saying? Basically we are focusing on the requirement on the requirement and because before the man of God was set in, let me take you back quickly and give you some few requirements and demands. Few requirements and leave some of the scriptures for him to unveil. Now go with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs the chapter number 7. The requirements the requirements Proverbs chapter 7 verse 1, sister. My son, keep my word, and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thy eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thy heart. Stay on, okay. Sorry. That's fine. The requirement, the demand, number one is to keep the words. Say, my son, hear my words and keep them. It is required for us to remain sons of God. It is required to have the word of God in us and keep them. Any person that turns away from the commandment of God is disqualified as a son of God. Unless you keep the word. So when he comes, he's going to search the word of God in us to qualify us to be. When you get to heaven and you don't know the word of God, I'm telling you, you're not a son of God. You're not a son of God. He gives us his word instead of us. And therefore, we say, keep my commandment so that you will live. Number one, keep my commandment so that you will live. Any pastor that will not teach you to understand the commandment of God and tells you that the law of God is abated. I'm telling you, the law of God is abolished. The law of God is cancelled. I am telling you, that person is not creating sonship in you. You can never become the son of God without having the commandment. Let my word not depart from your mouth. Meditate upon it day in and day out. Joshua 1.8 That it may cause you to be prosper. Psalm number 1 Delight yourself in my counsel. Don't be scornful. Don't be a person who is scorning me. And I think we talk about 
the character and the nature of scorners. There are so many people in the church, they consider themselves as the, if you are not the son of God, then you are a scorner. You scorn God. You scorn him. We talk about, we, we, we deal with that the next few days. The behavior and the character of scorners. So here, he said, my son, keep my word and lay up my commandment with thee. Number two, say, keep my commandment and live. Without keeping the commandment of God, you are a dead man walking on earth. If you don't have any commandment of God inside of you to kept, to be kept, I'm telling you, you are a dead man walking. Understand this, and it will help you. So when you come to God, don't come to God, Lord, I want this, I want this. If there is anything that you need to have, show me your ways. Show me your direction. Show me your paths. Yesterday, the Lord was rebuking us through Brother Emmanuel, that my people are always after revelation after revelation after revelation. It because the love that I have for you that I explain things for you. I want you to keep my word. Don't search for revelation. Search for my word. Search for understanding and in depth of my word that will create you to become a new personality that you so desire. So we don't run to prophets to prophets wanting the, the revelation, and that is what the, 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 the devil knows. The devil knows that these days men are hungry after the new thing in the Lord. But there is nothing new apart from what is being explained unto us. So all the revelation that we are receiving must be built upon the word of God. Because it's the word of God that makes us the sons of God. Apart from the word of God, there is no sonship. Apart from the word of God. Alright, sister, read the verse number three. Bind them. Now, Bind them upon thy fingers. Mm. Write them thy table of thy heart. Did you hear? Of thine heart. Bind them upon your fingers. What do we bind upon our fingers? Why? What? Is it, mm. not, is it not ring? Yeah. But here the Lord said, don't put on ring. Bind my word upon your fingers. So in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the, the, the high priest, he they had what we call the Ephron. They have all these things. That they have the 12 tribe of Israel. They wear apron. And they use that to go before God and pray. Not to complain or to, 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 to sermon the people. Bind them. Bind them upon your fingers. Born again believer. The only thing that you need to bind upon your finger. And to bind it upon your finger means. Let the word of God be upon your fingertip. Let the knowledge of the word of God so that your hand will not touch anything which is sinful. Everything that Christian, your hands touches, you tend to become that. Therefore, let your hand be full of the word of God. Let your finger be full of the word of God. Don't touch our cursed things. A hand which is bound with the word of God. So every day, your hands, every day, your hands must touch your Bible. Let your hands touch your Bible. Today, because of mobile phone and other things, we don't use the Bible. How many times? One of our sisters, I think, is it Sister Esther? She abandoned her WhatsApp. She said uh, it takes the whole time of her. And that is true. And because of that, she's not getting our messages on WhatsApp, by the way. <laughs> That's the only thing that she's missing. But her husband will have one. So she will pick it from the husband. What is distracting you? Anything that is taking you out of the counsel of God, take it out. So number one, commandment from or the requirement from the sons of God. We keep the word of God. We keep the word of God. We lay up the commandment of God. And we keep them in our fingertips so that we can live. Number four, we keep the law as we would the people of the eye of God. As we would as the people of the eye of God. Verse 2 says Keep verse, my commandments mm -hmm. and live and, and my law as the apple of thy eye. And that my law mm -hmm. as an apple of your eye. Have the word of God as a... What is the meaning of that word? Uh, you are the apple of my eye. What does it mean? It's a phrase. It's, a, it's an idiomatic expression, isn't it? It's an apple of my eye. What does it mean? Apple of my eye. 
talking about the fragility of, of his love for us. Fragility of his love for us. Because the apple is very fragile, isn't it? Yeah, sensitive. Sensitive. So dear. So precious. According to the natural instincts, any person who is falling down, the first place is cover his head. He want to put him himself. Therefore, when we went to care, they will show us how to uh, handle people when their patient is falling down. You don't hold a person, allow him or her to fall. <laughs> it's very hard. When somebody is falling and the clinical sets up, and the healthcare sets up, when somebody is falling down, don't hold a person. Because by trying to hold a person, you might distract him. Natural instincts, when anybody is falling down, you are going to use your hands. So if you are trying to hold a person, and the person is heavy, you are going to hurt yourself, and you are also going to destroy the person. So let the person fall. That is a law. So as a support worker, sometimes you go to work, and then your patient fall. And they are trying to accuse you. You didn't take, do your work job. Your job where I said, have you forgotten the principles of falling? I shouldn't touch the person. So it doesn't matter how close I am. There was nothing I could do. The person could fall. We are the apple of the eye of God. And therefore, the law says that we should keep it. Go ahead, sister. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just based on what you just said. So if the person is going to fall on broken bottle or fall on something or inside boiling water or something that's going to be dangerous. By law, you shouldn't touch him or her. Yeah. If anything happens, you are going to be the one who misdirected. It is your cause. Allow him to fall and pick him up. If he dies, he dies. Ah. Yeah. That is, is very cruel law. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I don't know where. But, but they are saying they about natural instincts. When a person is falling, a person will use his defensive mechanism to protect himself. And and to be honest with you, a person that is falling is a person who has lost his conscience. So I go to work because we have people who are at risk of falling. Elderly people, alcoholics that they can't stand. They've lost their balance. Yeah, they are not stable. They are not steady on their feet. So as they are walking, it's like somebody who is drunk. And here they are telling you, don't hold him when he's falling. <laughs> we leave it there. That is a law. We can't break it. <laughs> so let's go to verse number four quickly. Verse four quickly. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy king's woman. Do you hear that? Sons, call wisdom, you are my sister. And what is wisdom? What is wisdom? Ability to apply knowledge. Wisdom is accumulation of knowledge and insights, how you can apply them. So he said, call him my sister. Application, life application is only through Jesus Christ. He had the final say. So in the book of a proverb, Jesus was classified as wisdom. So say to wisdom, thou art my sister, understanding you are my what? My, my king's woman. My king's... Thy king's woman. Thy king's woman. What does it mean? We have king's men. But king's woman, what does it mean? If we have king's men, Jesus is our king's man, redeemer, according to the book of Ruth. So king's woman also have the same thing. So you are the one who come from the same bloodline. We have the same line. We are the same bloodline. Like my auntie. Yeah, we have sisters and brothers. So tell the wisdom and understanding. And all come from Jesus Christ. So when we come to the Lord, we seek wisdom, we seek understanding. Yeah, we seek his virtue, we seek his power, we seek his love. We don't seek material things. But we seek spiritual things that will change what we have into physical protection. Don't go to pastors who are showing how to win lotto. Don't go to pastors who are showing how to defend yourself without Christ, with helps, with leaves. Sometimes I, I, I laugh at all these things. Why are some people being deceived to deceive others like that? 
is very painful. Pastor Alex, be ready. I'm going to release you now. So what are we talking about? We are talking about the requirements, the commandment, the commandment. He said, bind them upon your finger. Write them upon the table of your heart. Verse 4. Write my law upon the table of your heart. Let the word of God govern you. Let the word of God control your heart. Let your heart be full of the word of God. As a son, this is a requirement. It's the word, the word, not prophecy, prophecy. To some extent, to some extent, Sometimes you understand that prophecy have led many Christians astray. By a prophet, Israel was redeemed. By a prophet, Israel was kept. Israel were raised up by the prophecy being fulfilled. Bible is full of prophecy. But I'm telling you, there are so many core prophets that their prophetic utterances are not coming from God. And therefore, is leading many astray. Many are being destroyed, many are being condemned. And today, the one word which is leading people to hellfire is prophecy. The so-called directions, which is not in the Bible according to what Jesus gave it to us. Go ye and preach the gospel and let people believe and come. Today, a, 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 a false pastor, they don't go. Mark chapter 28, verse 18. Mark chapter 16. <laughs> Verse 15, 16, 17. Jesus gave us this great commandments to do that. But today, prophet, they don't go. They stay in their house and they give an announcement, come to me. Sinners should come to them. And when they come to them, they are not changed into uh, righteous people, but they are even going deeper. Why? Because the commandment is opposite. That is what the false prophet they do. We go and preach the gospel that people be saved and they want people to come to them so that they be made well. It's lies, absolutely lie. Let me give you five, um, in verse 4, the same verse 4, he said, write them upon the table of your hearts. And then he also said, make wisdom your sister and also make understanding your kinswoman. Make wisdom your sister, make understanding your king's woman. If you want to make heaven, these are some of the requirements. We are required to give our all to God so that he will make us sons of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Alexander, now I release you, man of God. What is God laying on your heart? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I present to you the greetings from our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God that He has given us a new day. Because it had not been in the same manner with all men. So if by the grace of God we have come together, then we need to give praise to God. Amen. Amen. Praises be to our Lord and our Savior daily. Amen. Man of God, I'm so excited with what you were talking about, and God bless you. If he said, I believe God does what he wants. If you are prepared for that, if not, we go back to what you have prepared yourself. Today we oh, want to talk about... Really All right then. My topic uh, that I was <laughs> bringing is the mix-up attitude, which is the mix-up at the attitude of Christians and, and non-Christians. Mixed-up mixed multitude. Oh, mixed-up multitude, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, the you know, the son of God, God in the 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 That's right. 
Yeah. Actually, I've already opened the door. So just you, you just carry on, carry on with what you have, please. Don't let me mess you up. <laughs> but if you are led, if you are led to top up where we were, that will be fine. Then we want to continue to study about how we can become the sons of God. As we're going to look into the word of God, it's my prayer that the Lord will speak through us and destroy the works of the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. That he may grant us understanding above all things so that we may dwell in his gospel. When we say somebody is a son of God, it has nothing to do with the birth relationship. And when we are talking about the sonship of Christ, then we are talking about holiness or righteousness. That is why the prophet says and the angel said that and the holy thing that we are going to give you are going to give birth with is going to be called the son of God. As you have said, I do agree with you that Jesus came to establish the sonship on earth. It just confirmed to me that we have the same spirit. Considering the Bible, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ being the firstborn symbolizes righteousness or holiness. So in the Old Testament, when the Lord is talking about Jesus Christ, he was always referring Jesus as his righteousness. I will guide you with my righteousness. I will lead you with my righteousness. In my righteousness will be saved. He was always referring to Jesus Christ as his righteousness. In this I hear Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 to 6, you know. Jeremiah chapter 23, the verse number 5 to 6. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby it yeah. shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Amen. 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 So as I can kind say we are. Considering this scripture, the righteousness of God is manifested through Jesus Christ in people's lives. God said, and I will lift up a banner of righteousness. I will raise up. He will judge through righteousness. Now, and he will do all things through righteousness. And he will be called the Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah Hona, chapter 33, verse 14 to 16. Jeremiah Hona, 33, 14 to 16. Behold, the days come. Saith the Lord that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up 
unto David, and he shall look at judgment and righteousness in the land. Amen. 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 In the social edition, I you see on a young boy, you should be just was an attorney. Considering following this topic, Jesus Christ has been exclusively exempted as the righteousness of God. In the edition, a tyranny and nemi pebiaso, and nama body biaso say in the ready you should be so good. Therefore, the source of all righteousness is only Jesus Christ, not in any image nor in any creation. Therefore, without Jesus Christ, there is no source and no way that a man can receive the righteousness of God without Jesus Christ. In the, uh, Isaiah chapter 46, verse number 13. Uh, I, Isaiah 46, 13. I, Isaiah 46, 13. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. I bring to me my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Amen. 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 It is confirming that Jesus Christ is the source of righteousness that intervenes for every human being's life. In the and Therefore, through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we are considered as the sons of God. Therefore, Jesus or God cannot accept any person of the sons of God without confirming or affirming to the sonship of Jesus Christ. Anyone that rejects Jesus is rejected by the Father because all the righteousness of God is built on Christ, that through Christ all men shall become the righteous sons of God. He who that has not his father have not a son. And he who have not son, 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 son. And he who have not got a son doesn't know the father. It is written. Because God have selected Jesus Christ as our righteousness, he has also been given as a sign of our eternal life, as a symbol. And therefore the requirement of God in man's life can only be perfect or be possible through Jesus Christ. Therefore, anyone that rejects Jesus Christ or turn away from Christ have not turned away from Christ, but he have turned away from the manifestation of the word of God in his life. It is also Isaiah chapter 53, no? verse 10 and 11. No? Isaiah 53, 10 and 11. I read in Jesus' name. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So, therefore, will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Amen. Amen. 
na ni hunu mu na makwa tene ni ni no ebenya tene ni amanipa therefore will i divide no in him that my righteous son will obtain righteousness to him and kind and the hano so ni hunu pefe se tene na bibibia so se yesu christo nkutu esto here also is confirming the righteousness of god does not come through anything apart from through jesus christ there is no way there is no attempt or any hard work that a person can pursue righteousness without Jesus Christ can attain them by his revelation we will attain righteousness to all mankind and he had carried all our iniquity or he bared our iniquity upon himself Jeremiah chapter 2 verse number 22 Jeremiah 2 22 sorry it talks about the, the suffering of people who are going to reject Jesus Christ. Should we read Jeremiah 2? 22. For though thou wash thee with night. What's that mean? What's that word? N-I-T-R. Read what you have. For though thou wash thee with night. Mm. All right, nice. And take thee more so, yet thy iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Meaning that even if somebody wash himself with nitter or nitre and take uh and use it as a soap. He is still having his sin remain. This Bible verse represents those people who have rejected Jesus as the righteousness. Romans chapter 10, verse number 1 to 4 now. Romans 10, 1 to 4. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Three, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Four, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Amen. Amen. So Apostle Paul was bearing them record that there are so many people who have a zeal of God but they don't have wisdom and therefore they have rejected the righteousness of God and Jesus is the only way into God's righteousness. The hard desire of Apostle Paul was that those who have rejected Jesus will come to have this full knowledge and return unto God. Isaiah chapter 51, verse number 1. Isaiah 51 verse 1 Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock, whence ye are still, and to the whole of the place, whence ye are dead. Amen. 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 Here he is still talking about our Savior and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. 
So, what time we in another year? Red Lee Yeshu Christ to work us. Let's see my suffering. I saw my doing to me in emphasis. This is the type of the rock that Jesus prophesied or made the disciples aware in Matthew chapter 16 that will build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. He was talking about himself, not upon Peter, as people say. Hearken unto me, who ye who follow after righteousness, and that ye see the Lord. Look unto the rock or Jesus Christ when ye are howling. Isaiah 51 verse 1 was affirming John chapter 1 verse 12 John 1 12 <laughs> John chapter 1 verse 12 Yes please Alright But as many as received him To them gave he power to become the sons of God Even to them that believe on his name Amen Amen As many that believe in his name He gave them power to become the children of God if a person say if we say a person has become a son of God, meaning that that person have deserted the strength of sin and are now have receiving the power to overcome sin. That person become righteous and sanctified as Jesus is. The reason why many could not reject the testimony of Jesus Christ was that he never sinned or sin was not found in him. Because the one which is born of God does not sin, neither the seed of sin dwells in him. Therefore, any person that identify himself that he has received the sonship of Jesus Christ, that person must reflect his character, his nature must reflect in Jesus Christ. In all manner of conduct, behavior, and words must become exemplary life for people who want to know God. Sorry, John, first John chapter two, verse number twenty-nine. First John two twenty-nine. Amen. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Amen. 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 If you know that he is righteous, then every person that practices righteousness has been born of him. Therefore, this testifies that any person who cannot live a righteous life is not born of God and he doesn't know God either. God is a righteous God and every son of him who intends to come to him must be of his nature righteousness. Therefore, the highest requirement for every person that, perceive, that uh, seek God is righteousness. This is the kingdom of God that the Bible says that it is in us. When you're talking about the kingdom of God, it's talking about righteousness. 
The first fruit or the, the highest seed that God required for every person that claimed that come under the feet of Jesus Christ is righteousness. The first John Honor chapter 3, verse 7 to 10 was so what can't see you on your share. First John chapter 3, 7 to 10. Yes, I read in Jesus' name. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Same. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth no righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen. Amen. This is a confirmation that any person who is not living a righteous life does not know God, neither does he belong to be, uh, belong to God. Rather, the person that live a righteous life, there is all evidence that he is born of God. Therefore, anyone that calls himself a child of God, we must see the seed of righteousness in you. If there is anything so important and needful in this life, it should be pursuit of righteousness. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto thee. If somebody comes to the Lord or any person who would think that he is in the Lord, the first requirement is that he will be perfect or he will be righteous in the sight of God and man. And this is the will of God from all mankind. I read in Jesus' name. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Amen. 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 When, I'm he, afraid, my friend, friend, him. when Israel was a child, then I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. When we are talking about Egypt, it is in reference to world or sin. Therefore, what the prophet was saying here is, I've called my sons or my son out of sin. Therefore, by faith through Jesus Christ, we have attained the righteousness of the sons of God. The Lord was also giving this one as a sign and also an example that he has a son, and that son is Jesus Christ. Therefore, when the Lord walked on earth, this prophecy or scripture were fulfilled that when the Herod was searching for the life of Jesus, he was sent into Egypt. And when Herod died, the Lord sent uh, Mary and Joseph to bring the boy from Egypt. Therefore, 
so that all mankind will know that the righteousness and the sonship of God is only in Jesus Christ. Therefore, if somebody doesn't know Jesus, having have him as his personal savior, then he has nothing to do also with the Father. And therefore, if somebody refuses to use Jesus as a way or as an entrance, then the wrath of God is upon that person. Because every person who does not believe in God, on Jesus Christ as a son of God, is already condemned as a sinner. Therefore, all the righteousness and the perfect and also the, the holy standard of God is solely revealed and manifested through Jesus to all mankind. Therefore, the scriptures say that little sons you are of God and you have overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world. Let me say something here about God. Recently, let me say something here. Recently, I think the day before yesterday, a gentleman started co communicating with me because I'm exposing uh, one of the demon, the high demons who are operating today in our churches, Dr. Uru. The guys I have exposed him and he started insulting me and he's saying that I don't know what I'm dealing with. I say, greater is he that is in me than that one which is using that man. I'm not saying this to condemn him. I want people to be aware of the danger that many people who have been deceived to, to follow such men. Continue, brother. In the story, uh, first John chapter uh, 5, verse 18 to 21. So, first John chapter 5, verse 18 to 20. 1. To 21, sorry. We know that whosoever is born of God sinned not, for he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him, and that, I mean, that, sorry, I take it from 20 again. And we know that the Son of God is come, and are given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is, that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Because Comparing this scripture, it tells you that when you become a born again person, you have nothing to do with the world. Why? Because the Son of God, world or sin, has nothing to do with him. In this Thirty verse number four. No, I want to show. Consider Proverbs chapter thirty verse six is also talking about the Son of God. Verse number four. Verse number four. Proverbs thirty verse four. Who had ascended up into heaven or descended? Who had gathered the wind in his fist? Who had found? Who had bound the waters in the garment? Who had established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Amen. Amen. Consider the scripture, Jesus, God wanted to confirm that he has a son, and the son's name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Then I consider this subject, he said, who have arise unto the high and who have come down, who has the air or wind in his hand. 
who had bound the waters in the in the garments who had established all the ends of the earth this was also a question if you know him what is his name and what is the name of his son here he is talking about the father and the son which is a trinity this affirmed the trinity and established that hallelujah amen all these things were written in the old and, the, and and fulfilled in the new testament so that when jesus appeared people will not rebel against him but they will really embrace him as truly he is the one that the prophet has spoken about it is true without any controversy that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That anyone that will choose him will have eternal life. Also, it's not only play that we have evidence or uh, a prophecy that God had a son in the Old Testament. Yeah, Psalm 89, verse 26 and 27. Now, in Psalms 89, verse 26 to 29. Psalm 89. Psalm 89, 26 to 29. Yes, please. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him for, forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. 29. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Amen. 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 And he shall be called the son of God. I've lost I've lost the chapter again. Some eighty nine twenty six. Okay. I will set his son also in the no, he shall carry. Uh, continue. Also I will make him a firstborn throughout. Continue, brother. Mm -hmm. His seed also will I make endurance forever and his throne as the days of heaven. If we testify that Jesus is the Son of God, it doesn't remain only here. But he has inheritance or he reigned like the father also. Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof arise. Thou stillest them. Amen. Amen. This scripture also confirmed that when Jesus comes, he will walk on the sea and the storm will rise up, but he will still the storm to testify that indeed he is the Son of God. Wow. So when Jesus walk on the sea and they calm the storms, the, uh, the, the, the disciples affirm that indeed this is the Son of God. Because Psalm number 89, verse 9, have said so. 
that the sun will walk on the sea. So the Lord Jesus Christ that we are testifying about him indeed he is God and he's also the Son of God as a title. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 107, 20 to 31. I believe people you are learning something. 107, 20. 20 to 21. Yes, please. Yeah. It's his word and heal them and deliver them from their destructions. 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. Amen. Please add a taxi. So, 31. All right. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare its works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in sheaves that do business in great waters. 24. These see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lieth up, which lifted up the waves thereof. 26. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depth. Their soul is melted because of trouble. 27. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are their wits end. 28. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. 30. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired heaven. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 to 26, and you should know how far I could run. Is he pepper pepper manager to a person? Matthew chapter 28, the Bible says that Jesus said, Matthew 28, 23. The Bible says that Jesus walked with his disciples and he calmed the storms. And then this confirmed what has been written here in Psalm 107. The Oya Psalm 107 verse 20 now. Or children which are some part. Yes, you can see a seminar. Now, what we think it is here now. It testified through verse 20 with Psalm 107 verse 20 that Jesus is the Word that had established from the beginning of creation. As it is said, he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from all their destruction. When we talk about God, meaning that his word is equal with him. Therefore, whosoever would disregard the Bible have disregard God. Some people are using yeah. Bible. Somebody was saying that you can use Bible to go to toilet. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God have mercy upon them. Mm -hmm. This scripture established that Jesus is God and He is the Word of God who was with God in the beginning. And He will be our Jitumu say, Yes, you can see your coupon, baby, and so as I did to me, so in your coupon, so no, sorry, nothing. Every person that believes that Jesus is the is God must also affirm that He is the Son and He is the Word of God. Brother, let me say something here. To be honest with you, people who have been taken into the spiritual realm will testify about this Bible. Beloved, it yeah. is not a mere book. It is not a mere book. So glorious, so powerful, so honorable that to be honest, a Jewish, when he touches his Bible, he will kiss the Bible before he opens it because he values it as the word of God. Be very, very careful. Those men and many people who are deceiving us and looking down upon the word of God. If you look down upon even one leaflet of the word of God, there is a curse attached to that. So only demonized yeah. people that can do that. But I take from there. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so for me, see, Bible is here, because I know who should be the Bible or two from Kra. Let me Oh, yes. Amen. If I see that somebody has put a Bible on the floor, my heart will be, will be, will be panting. See, I mean, I'm not going to be Bible for me, I'm going to be able to be free. If I'm walking about and I see even a leaflet, just a sheet of Bible on the ground, I pick it and bring it at home. Because I can't even imagine the size of the ground. I say, "I'm going to be able to find a quotation." I was going to be able to find a quotation. I was going to be able to find a quotation. Even before I was born again, I became born again. If I see a sheet of paper on the floor, and maybe I pick it, maybe I I need a paper to do what. <laughs> <laughs> it tells me what do you want to do that paper for <laughs> and if I see a quotation <laughs> I don't burn that quotation together with what I want to do I remove that quotation out of what were you using that paper for then why are you picking papers <laughs> on the ground <laughs> <laughs> like if you if you if if you could announce if you if you be being a media be a mission this is a I understand you. I understand you. <laughs> All right. You want to hold certain things. I want to push and see why he was using those yeah. papers. For. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what he said now. <laughs> I, I got it. I got what he was using that sheet of paper for. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so he feared the word of God and he cherished the word of God so much that anytime he finds any paper or any sheets around and he sees the word a quotation on it, he will remove that quotation carefully before he will misuse that paper. <laughs> Though I didn't know much about the word of God, but I perceive within my spirit the word of God is holy. Therefore, I should consider the word of God with dignity. And this is a menu of it. So, so for us, he didn't come up in a common or coffee and copper. I saw my cousin, I'm a slow. I heard a man from God. He's a born here, so I'm a man. So whilst I wasn't born again, when I'm talking to a person, the person bring God in. I said, please, please, don't bring me there because I'm carrying a load of sin which I've not been able to deal with. So we righteous people must affirm, confirm, and implement the word of God so that it will be established and will be able to fulfill its purpose. Talking about the word of God, we are talking about Jesus Christ. Now, when we say that Jesus is the Son of God, it doesn't reduce him from being God. Yeah, I prove it, baby. I mean, somebody can't come by and prove it after. Proverbs 8, verse 22, no aircon. Let's read from Proverbs chapter 8. No, we never read there. Verse 22, Jesus is revealing us the word. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, mm -hmm. before his was opposed. Mm -hmm. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no death, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with waters, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as, while as yet he had not made the head, nor the field, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heaven, I was there. When he set the compass upon the face of the dead, when he established the cloud above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, 29, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, mm -hmm. rejoicing always before him. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen.
Many people, especially Muslims, denied Jesus Christ as God through his sonship. How can he being a son be a God? But this scripture confirmed the testimony of John that in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. Therefore, anyone who is explaining the scriptures and deny Jesus of his Godship or his deity has made the word of God to become lies. Because this is the testimony about the son from the father. Hebrew chapter. One no verse five verse five to ten no. Hebrew chapter one verse number five to ten. I read in Jesus' name. For unto which of the angels said ye at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Mm -hmm. And again, when when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. Mm -hmm. And of the angels he said, Who maketh his angels spirit, and his ministers a flame of fire? Hey, but unto the son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sector of righteousness is the sector of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Ten. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of his, of thy hand. Amen. Amen. Concerning this scripture, affirm that God have never called any angel as his son. That doesn't mean that angels are not the seed or the sons of God, but there is a different interpretation. Here, ah. He testified that God created angels. And all angels testify that they were created by God and they all consider God as their father. But Jesus is the first creature that God has testified that he is his son. But talking about the sonship, there are stages. We have level one, level two, and therefore we can say the angels also were formerly called are the sons of God. They were using the title according to uh, Genesis chapter number 6, isn't it? The sons of God came and slept with the sons of men. Considering angels are the sons of God, but none of them have authority or power to sit at the right hand side of the Father. Only Jesus bear that position. In Tim was say, above four Ben and Wakacha and the person in the banner, and they say, above four Ben, Raman, a quiet man about Tinny, and if I saw a negro sitting. Therefore, he said that which angel have he allowed him to sit at the right hand side? So he said, which angel have he said, today you are my son? In Tim was saying, now, Obano Hundi, verse eight, you know, Obano Hundi, or soon Yanko Pong, Wahingo, or da, da. But unto the son, or concerning the son, say he that throne, O God, is forever and ever. Scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. 
Yes, I see my agenda. I need your ban. No other answer. So ban is you. You can't This is a witness from the father comparing the son to his equality with him. And in this case, she will bring a kind symbol for Jesus Christ to the name of Yahweh. She will be punished and free. That is why we must be very vigilant and careful whenever we are speaking concerning the sonship or the deity between Jesus and the Father. If you say we are Jana and Kasaneka, so we banish you in your coupon. That is said we banish you in your coupon. This is the affirmation from the Father confirming the Son to be equal with Him in His deity as God. And in the Pebia, we did to me say Jesus Christ in your coupon, in your coupon ban. As the soul was said to me say, was saying in your coupon. Any person that believe that Jesus is the Son of God must also believe or accept. That Jesus is God. Also, for my men, for we meet him. So, we call heaven now. Heaven in teaching, you the last a place in our honor. Evans, a pneumonium is something. A pneumonium be a woman heaven should be a young couple. When you go to heaven, there are different types of glory, three types of glory. And every glory that we see that is the reflection of the Father's glory. The third glory. If a person hasn't got no God, he can't even climb up to the hill of the Lord. On that mountain is the chair of authority or power. The seat or the throne. Sa a kunyana susuna or bano etsi ewe janis and ifaso. And the same throne is where the son is seated at the right hand side of the father. And our mo mo yina susuno or surni asasi any asasi asinya to tumi se or mi yunyan kupon. And those who are on that tattered glory, glorious place, heaven and earth testify that. These are the deities of God. The Masin be son of a quenya will be new and cupon. I want to mean Kohon Cotton. I want a band of son of Yusu Christo, waiting your cotton legends in the first room. Therefore, my question is in the throne room of God on the sea, there are three seats. If Jesus is not equal with the Father, how can he mount up onto that throne and sit at the right hand side of the Father? What the Lord opened my understanding to to know is in the Revelation, is it chapter number five, where the twenty-four elders are bowing before the throne and they are shouting, Holy, holy, holy. So holy to the Son, holy to the Father, and holy to the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Isaiah chapter number 6 also Isaiah also confirmed that when he went to the throne room of the father he saw the same thing and the voice sounded and said whom should I send and who will go for us he was talking about the trinity so talking about Jesus Christ here on earth he is considered as the son but when we go to heaven Jesus is the father or God talking about does not mean that the father doesn't exist and he is Jesus Christ who is the father who is the son and he is the Holy Spirit no they are three distinguished beings. The Father is there, the Son is there, the Holy Spirit is there, but they all come together to emerge to become one. Amen. Amen. He didn't say okay, Zechariah chapter 12, verse number 10. Zechariah chapter number 12, verse 10. So from the verse, I can't we be an animal so I don't be. That's right. That should be our last. Zechariah 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. 
and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for his only son, mm -hmm. and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Amen. 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 The only son, no, a drama used to be on a first born, no, so say drama used to be to. So here you see in the book of Zachariah that the only son stands for Jesus Christ, as well as John also testified that Jesus is the only begotten son of God. In Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10, I was a mystery at Dominion, go to Sura Hong Hong, and go to David, if he any Jerusalem for some Ashemia or my shimmy, my suggestion, and the pain I will be more. Our poor upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Mourn him as they pierced him on the cross, and water came out of him, water and blood. We will mourn him as the only begotten Son of God. God bless you. God bless you. I love, I believe we are really getting to the point. There was a time as I wanted to deal with this, the Old Testament uh, prophecy about Jesus Christ. And I love what a brother does. That is where his area is. That's why I wanted him to come every now and then open understanding because he is always revealing Jesus through the Old Testament. From the Genesis to Revel uh, to the to the to Malachi, or is it Malachi or Ma Micah? The last chapter Malachi. to the Malachi, Malachi. The brother has been uh, gifted to know all that has been said about Jesus Christ. So most of his teachings is based upon the exposure, exposition of Jesus Christ from the Old Testament to the New Testament. So uh, those people that listen to this false prophet and say that there is no Old Testament uh, that Jesus is mentioned, because in the Old Testament he didn't mention the name Jesus Christ. Yeah, he used the word his son, the anointed one, the righteous one, the one that is sent, the one that will be pierced. So these are some of the. So if you are not well versed in the things of the Spirit. And it takes only the Holy Spirit to explain this thing to you. Now, so those people that read the Bible for conflict and for misunderstanding, they are really blind to the truth. God bless you, man of God. Is there any question? Is there any question? We have a few minutes to pray and go. Do you have any question or contribution, please? You are allowed to do so. Is there any question? Amen. 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 What is the Okasa for Okasa for? I don't know. Okasa for the speaker. No, no, it's two. One is Okasa for, one is Kasa for, and the other one is Okasa for, or something like that. So yeah, Okasa for. Okasa for me, the preacher. See Sister Esther and do your, your tree lessons. She is there to teach you. <laughs> She's the best among all of us. She's very good in tree. All right. All right. All right. Um, you know, talking about Trinity, yes. then, uh, 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 there, there's a man of God in America that been really hitting the word that there's nothing like Trinity, that God is not three days, this word that you used. That, and I know the teaching is so deep and people have been trying to because everyone is most people are used to trinity trinity and god is like he explained that god is there's nothing like trinity that even jesus is god i don't know how to explain it here now but that word that there is no trinity i will maybe you give me some verses to show me where in the bible where it says god i mean the, the, the word using the word trinity you know that word trinity how did we come about it and god there's nothing like trinity that it's just a word that is used and we've been we, they've been carrying it all along maybe it started from Rome. there was a way you put it i don't know if you can give me some scriptures to tell me to show me trinity in the bible praise the lord the word i know trinity, you see the okay. word trinity is not written in the bible it's like the word rapture. 
Yeah, there are certain words they are not written. So when we want the word to define Trinity, is a language or is a word that they have used to classify God's head. So if somebody say that Trinity is not in the Bible as a word, but as a subject, it is. That's what we're talking about. From Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation, it reveals so many areas that the Father will speak, that the Son will react, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, from Genesis chapter 1, God said, let us make man. That word, us, is not first, it's, it's third person plural. I'm not good in English grammar, but I believe us signify two or more. Let us make man in our image. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. So man of God, I believe you have so many. That question is for you. It's not for me. <laughs> when we come to Genesis, at his there. When we come to uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it is also there. So it's not something we dispute about at all. So the sister wants some scripture to confirm that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit Exist in the Bible. You know that, Sister Wimmy. You don't doubt that. No, no, that there are three personalities, that there are three different, that they are not, I don't know. That they are not the that same. They, yeah, just, I just need scriptures to back that. Yeah. Jesus, All right. Before Pastor, Pastor will come in, let's go to Genesis chapter 1. I think we've been dealing with this one because for us to establish every word of God, it must spring from God. And the Godhead is being revealed. All that we have studied today, if you made a notes, I believe some of us we couldn't make the notes. But every scripture that we have spoken even is enough to tell them Trinity exists. But whenever God is speaking to towards his son, so there is no need of much so please, next time, let us do our notes and write all this quotation. Every quotation that the brother has said, uh, it reveals Trinity. Everything that we have said is Trinity. Although the Holy Spirit was not involved here. The Holy Spirit became involved only when Jesus was established here on earth or was finally fulfilled his sonship. The Father has always been speaking about the Son. The Proverbs chapter 8 that we read is one of the powerful dynamic areas to reveal Jesus as the Son of God. And we read so many quotations today that talks about the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son. So the Holy Spirit came in from Luke chapter number 1 where the birth of Jesus Christ was confirmed. That the spirit of the father. Now he revealed the spirit of the father. Who was the spirit of the father? And the spirit of the father was also at the book of Genesis. The spirit of God. So in the Old Testament, whenever we hear the spirit of God, we are talking about the Holy Spirit. Anytime the spirit of God came upon me, the spirit of God came upon me. The word of God. Every time the spirit of the God comes, what, what follows? The word. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I received the word of God. So when God speaks, his word is Jesus Christ. When the Spirit of God manifests, is the Holy Spirit. This shouldn't be a confusion at all. But to the blind, it's very difficult to establish that. Yeah? So having said it, I think you are free now. You know all the scriptures already. Unless maybe Pastor Alexander want to add some few scriptures. Genesis chapter one. Oh, hey, brother. When we say we trim a mede, we a kahon kakra. So we Isaiah chapter sixty-three verse ten na. Isaiah sixty-three verse ten. And we say o kahono. I want to cast off our Holy Spirit in Kwanza, but we don't say we don't show cancer. Mhm. Glad with that. Yes, please. Yeah. For they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I, Proverbs I 30, verse 4, and I'll say, 
Okay, can I swear on a boss? So now, sir, so on a boy, when you men did the same, the bad and so did the same. And the only couple of merchants say, General Honor, the baby, so so. As we read the uh, proverbs of the third series as foregoing, it reveals that who created all things and what is the name of the Son. So here, that one also reveals that God exists and His Son is also there. And uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 46, verse number 11. Isaiah 46, verse 11. Sister, just write them down. Verse 10, rather. Verse 10. 46, 10. 46, 10. Yes, please. Yes, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient time, the time, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. I mean, Just calling, the verse. Calling a, okay, calling a rebellious bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. Amen. Amen. As of us, I was saying, I pray or crook for being a genuine that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when I, in the book of Isaiah, the Lord said, I will call upon the mighty man from among my people. So here, Isaiah was confirming whom should I send and who would go for us. He used the word us. That is the Trinity, the Father. That any time that God is speaking and he used the word us, he's not talking about angels. He's talking about the Trinity. Yeah. Colossians chapter oh, 2 verse 9 also say that in Christ is the fullness of the entire trinity in Christ is the fullness because he is the father the father is in him he said you should ever have seen me have seen the father as I am going I will send you the spirit of the father so go ahead brother the trinity is revealed in the deity of Jesus Christ Alex, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, sister, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. God gave his son, and he is the child to marry. God and the Son of God is God. So there is no uh, any dispute without controversy. The fullness of Christ is the clear. When Jesus was being baptized in the book of John, uh, sorry, in the book of Luke chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 3, the Father spoke, the Holy Spirit descended, and the Son was in the water. All these things affirm the sonship and the, and, the, and, the, and the trinity. Go ahead, man of God. Sorry for cutting you short. Uh, any young can be seen on patch, you know. Yes, sir. It is possible. Sasha or not. You should move your celebrity as you never be. Because of time, Sister Omi, we're going to create another time tomorrow. And God's willing, we're going to go through that. And we establish those uh, verses. So to be very, 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 because we need to establish and understand that the reason why we are doing all these studies are there are so many wrong people who have come to contradict the ways of God. I want to appeal to everybody here. Don't listen to any person who is not teaching holiness and righteousness and truth. Don't. Because you may think that you want to go there for knowledge, but you will confuse yourself. Your message as are not born by the Spirit of God. It is born with the spirit of lies. I don't care. He can be um, a, a, a American because he's no more human being like me. He can be white. He's no more human being like me. Let us run into this book. I'm not a pastor or a preacher who tell his, uh, his members or his brethren just to listen to him. But when it comes to holiness and righteousness defined, turn away from every prophet, 
If you go and the man is not rebuking sin, if you go and the man is not pointing you to Christ, if you go and the man is not establishing holiness, righteousness, and truth, move away from that person. Don't listen to anything. Don't. Why? Because Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and they become contaminated. Where there is knowledge of good without evil, which is the tree of life. Let us feed on the tree of life. Any pastor who is not feeding you on the tree of life, I'm telling you, he will give you poison on a word. Give you poison on a word. Very, 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 very delicate. And I'm appealing to my brothers also who are preaching the truths. Please, that set the word of God. That set them. Investigate. Look for Bible references. Today, it is so easy. Go to Google. Any subjects that you need, just click the subjects and say Bible references on that. You will study them. That's what I do. The highest way to study easily. And Bible will give you all the references that you know. You read it yourself. And where you don't get understanding, look for another Bible verse. Because there are so many wolves in the sheep clothing. So believers got to be very, very, very sensitive. The little that you know, they will bring controversy. And they will bring confusion. They will bring confusion. I know some people who are saying that Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Father. In which sense? Gabriel, I am my papa. My father was Michael. So Gabriel is Michael. No. Gabriel is different from Michael. Wherever God said there is a son, meaning that there is two different people talking about. They all have the same authority. In John chapter 16, Jesus said, Everything that the Father has is mine. And when the Holy Spirit comes, He will take that which is mine and give it to you. So Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Meaning that we are not the same person, but we share everything one. We have everything in oneness. Please, some of us, we are being confused. Can be a general overseer. But please, let us use what the Bible is saying. Some of us, our theology was wrong. Our theology was wrong. I know that this thing is a big problem in so because of the background of the people. A man you want God call us on in the area that we want him to change us, he will change us. The father is sitting on the throne, the son is talking, you see the son outside. It's a mystery that we can't understand, but please, it's as simple as that. There is the father, there is the son, and there is the Holy Spirit. Three distinguished beings constitute the Trinity. Shall we pray? Bring your heart before the Almighty God and ask Him to cleanse your heart and your mind from anything which is in contrast to His will. Ask Him to save your soul and make you a holy servant. Cry, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. We worship and we honor you. We celebrate you because you are King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Your counsel shall never come to an end. Your purpose shall always be made known unto us. We bring our hearts to you, O God, by the entrance of your word, open our understanding. Grant us knowledge and wisdom that we will know who you are. As we read your scriptures every day, let these scriptures begin to materialize in our life. So that, O God, on that day of reckoning, we will not say, Had I know. Continue to engraft us in your will. Forgive us of our sin. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Make us your servants. In Jesus' name. I want you to pray this prayer after me. If you want to confess Jesus as your Lord. For the first time, say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And deliver my soul. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my will. Please give me your heart. Please give me your mind. And please give me your will. In Jesus name. Beloved if you have prayed that prayer. I want you to overcome every thought. Of sin that you find yourself in. 
He who that comes to the Lord must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek after him. In 1 John chapter number 1, he said that when we confess him as our Lord and our personal Savior, when we declare him to forgive us, he forgives us. So have the thoughts and the feeling, have the knowledge and the faith that empowers you to see yourself as a child of God. You have now become a child of God if you have prayed that prayer sincerely. But you need to continue to study the word of God to engraft yourself into the divine truths. Amen. God richly bless you. God bless you for doing that. Shall we share the grace of God together? And now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all, Facebook family. We want to break now and we will come back later tonight at 10 o'clock UK time. 10 o'clock UK time. So please check it out with us. We have about 3 o'clock now, which is the next 8 hours. The next 8 hours we will be back here. If you have anything that you want me to pray with you, you want us to agree on, or you want more explanation of anything, please, you can call me. My number is 0044UK, 7804282333. Or join us on Facebook, on YouTube, on WhatsApp. You can find every information that you want from us. If God is touching your heart, you sent us your tithes and your offering. We'll be very pleased because now we want to go out and preach the gospel. Pastor Alexander Ajay has been called by God. He is in Kumasi. And when he came to me, it dawned my heart that this message, people need to know much. Not only here on YouTube, on Facebook, but we want, we want to sponsor the brother. Let God touch your heart, not only him. We have some pastors in Sunyani. We have some brothers in, uh, in Nigeria that we are supporting. We have brothers in Uganda that we are supporting. So, beloved, help us to do this ministry. We are building a shelter or a meeting place, a church for a group in Uganda. We are telling you all these things so that if God touches your heart to come and support, go to our website. It's www endtimeholinessfellowship.org only if you are born again only if you are born again or you want to make heaven so you want to invest in heaven we welcome you to invest in this ministry and we bet you everything that God that, that money will attract to God you will also have the same equal reward in heaven serve God with your prayer life not only money but pray for this ministry as well intercede for us as we also intercede for you to now we are coming to pray. So please join us in exactly UK time, 10 o'clock, which is 11 o'clock Europe time. And I think it to be somewhere, um, is it somewhere 6 o'clock or, yeah, 6 o'clock uh, American time or 5 o'clock, within 5 and 6 o'clock. God bless you. I love you all and have a nice Friday. God bless you. Amen.